Hello and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Randacia or Randy for short. And in today's video, we are going to be going over these topics for student loans. So it's going to be like a student loans overview. If that interests you, then keep on watching. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to go over is a couple of definitions so you understand what I'm going to be talking about. So, um, and just really quickly, this is going to be kind of like a two or three part series. So, um, this is just the build up for other things that I'm, I'm going to go over in like the next video or two. And also, um, I'm not going over every single thing. This is just going to be a high level. Um, and I'm not a financial advisor or anything like that. So this is just my research and things that I understand and how I understand it. And I'm just sharing it with you guys. So hopefully it'll help someone out there. So uh, yeah, just take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt and hopefully it'll be like a starting point or additional information for you guys to do your own research. Okay, so student loans, what are they? Basically, they're loans taken out for you to pay for school. So for tuition, fees, housing, things like that. It would be nice if I would move the paper, wouldn't it? Okay, and then next definition would be um, your student loan servicer. So that is basically the entity or the company or whatever. Um, the website is just like basically who handles um, your payment collections. Um, who do you go to for like customer service, help with your student loan um, account. So the next one will be disbursements. And basically a disbursement is basically a payout of your student loans. So next we are going to go into the types of student loans, or you could call it like a, a category. One category is federal. So in federal loans, you have direct loans, Stafford loans, Perkins loans, plus loans, like the parent plus is I think the most common, um, federal family education loans, and then the next category is like private loans. So anything that's not federal, basically these loans um, are given out by banks. So that's as far as I'm going to go on like diving into the types of the loan. So I suggest that um, if you're offered any student loans that you do your research on the type of loan that you're offered, as there can be advantages and dis disadvantages to each um, type depending on your situation. But all things being equal, the best type of loan to me is a subsidized loan. So um, subsidized loans versus unsubsidized loans. A subsidized loan is basically um, a loan where the interest is being paid by the government while you are in school. You pay the interest once the loan goes into repayment status once you grade graduate. A unsub unsubsidized loan is a loan where you are responsible for paying the interest, which um, the interest starts accruing um, upon disbursement. So any unpaid interest capitalizes once the loan goes into repayment status after you graduate. Okay. So the next section will be um, repayment. So know that you can make repayments or you can make payments on your loans while you are still in school. So if you graduate with loans, most federal loans give you a six month grace period before your loan goes into repayment status. But know that um, there are ways to trigger um, the start of your repayments. And two of those ways is if you leave school or if you drop below half time enrollment. So with re there are several repayment plan options and I'm only gonna go over a couple. So um, the first one is going to be your standard repayment. And this is basically the default repayment plan. But um, like once you graduate and your uh, loans go into repayment status, but you can request um, a different repayment plan at any time. And then um, there's the income driven repayment plans. And that is based on your income and your family size. But your monthly payments could be zero. 
So I'm mentioning this one specifically because this could be a better option for you um, if you're going through like a hard time other than forbearance and deferment because this allows you to make some type of payment and the payments that you do make will be applied to any unpaid slash accrued interest. And also with this um, repayment plan, loan forgiveness is possible if the loan isn't paid in full after 20 to 25 years. And then there's loan consolidation. Um, loan consolidation basically combines multiple loans into one loan so that you are now making one monthly payment instead of multiple uh, payments on multiple loans. Um, just know that with this one, the interest rate on the consolidated loan is typically based on the average of the interest rates of your other loans. So there is pros and cons to this, but if you have federal loans, um, you should be able to reach out to your loan servicer and get this service free. So you should not be paying for um, any service that consolidates your federal student loans because it, it's free with your loan servicer, typically. So now let's go into, go a little bit deeper into forbearance and deferment. So basically these are very similar um, in the sense that they both can stop or minimize your payments for reasons such as unemployment, economic hardship, et cetera, et cetera. Um, typically these, um, a forbearance or a deferment will last about 12 months and can be renewed up to three years. Um, but the most important thing about these uh, forbearance and deferment periods is that interest may or may not accrue during this period. So if interest does accrue, it will be capitalized when the forbearance um, or deferment period ends. One quick note, because I didn't want, I don't want anyone to like really panic because we are on the COVID-19 forbearance right now. So a lot of uh, federal student loans are on pause and just know that interest is not accruing right now. So um, since the interest isn't accruing, there will be no interest capitalized when the COVID-19 forbearance ends. However, um, while reading, I did see that if your loans were on forbearance or deferment before the COVID-19 forbearance started, it is a possibility that any unpaid interest that accrued during your pre-COVID uh, forbearance that interest could be capitalized once the COVID forbearance ends because this COVID forbearance is still a forbearance. So um, I remind you that I said that any forbearance or um, deferment can trigger capitalization. So if you have um, a forbearance period, if you were on a forbearance or deferment period before COVID-19 happened and you had some interest that accrued then and then COVID-19 forbearance started, that interest that accrued in that pre-COVID forbearance could become capitalized on top of the loans that you already have. So I hope that made sense, but um, if you have questions about it, then you should be able to call your loan servicer to find out um, what happens to the interest that may have been accruing pre, like in your, um, forbearance or deferment period pre-COVID forbearance. So I hope that made sense, but again, just call your loan servicer to ask them questions because this really depends on situation to situation. So um, lastly, I wanted to talk about um, delinquency, default to discharges and loan forgiveness when it comes to federal student, student loans. So, Know that if you don't pay off your loan and you just stop making payments, then your loan will be delinquent the first day after your missed payment. So after 90 days, your delinquent status will be sent to the credit bureaus. Um, your loans will default after 270 days or nine months past due. Defaulting on your student loans can damage your credit. Um, it may result in wage garnishment and any tax refund that you may get can be withheld. So federal student loans can be discharged in a chapter 17 or 13 bankruptcy, but it is near impossible to get them discharged successfully. So take heed. 
Um, also know that there are student loan forgiveness programs out there, but the requirements can be demanding and complicated. So definitely seek professional advice before getting student loans if you are in the mindset that they will be forgiven. So especially you aspiring teachers out there, definitely talk to um, your student loan servicer before taking out the loans or anytime you take on more loans. So that's all I have for you guys in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button and hit that subscribe button if it feels right. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.